Hey guys, this is Ron. So I'd like to talk a little bit about password management. So lately I've been thinking a lot about how I handle my accounts due to a lot of the breaches and, and whatnot. Uh, it's good to have a good solid management plan. Additionally, I've been thinking about you know what happens to my accounts once I pass away. Will my wife have access uh, to the information that she needs? And so I've, I've really started to readdress this uh, within the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the methods um, that I'm using mostly to generate some feedback you know from the community uh, am I doing the right things am I uh, you know following some of the best business practices what other areas could I cover down on so as I talk about you know what I'm doing hopefully that'll start turning some things in your own mind and if you're a little bit farther along than me please let me know so the three primary methods that I'm, I'm uh, attacking this problem with is with the YubiKey, uh, KeyPass, and OwnCloud. And so if I bring up uh, Chrome here, the YubiKey uh, can provide a couple different uh, functionalities for me. So the YubiKey 4 is what I have, uh, and so what I use it typically for is for SSH access into my servers. So I, I run a number of servers at the house for my own personal use and education. Uh, and so uh, I like using uh, key access into them rather than username and password. Additionally, the YubiKey can provide uh, one-time password authentication as well as static uh, password authentication. Now, I haven't quite gone down the route of using one-time passwords because the majority of my at least online accounts already provide some mechanism for uh, two-factor authentication whether it's an authenticator type app or you know uh, SMS to me you know I understand that each one of those has their own kind of vulnerabilities and their own kind of use cases uh, but so far I haven't quite gone down the one-time password route if you are thinking about doing that uh, there are a couple of articles about uh, the different services that, that you could use uh, the YubiKey uh, for those um, types of things. Now, if you notice here, there's a couple of different uh, password managers, LastPass, KeyPass, Password Safe, you know, this and that. So when I started looking at, you know, what, um, what service I would use to manage my passwords, one of the things that I thought was important was, was, not to have all my passwords on somebody else's server. Now, whether that's a good call or not, you know, remains to be seen. Uh, I've definitely found scenarios where uh, I'm out and about uh, and I don't have access to, you know, one of my systems, or maybe I'm not allowed to bring my laptop into a certain environment, which means, uh, you know, getting access to my key pass is, is difficult, um, or even maybe USB isn't authorized so using my YubiKey uh, isn't even an option so there's definitely scenarios um, where I'm setting myself for, up for failure uh, but at the same time I think uh, for the most part I'm moving in a better direction than, than where I was where I may be using the same password on multiple different sites so as far as the YubiKey to set it up with SSH there's a couple of great articles out there uh, this is one of them uh, it talks about you know the steps that you'll have to go through to generate your certificates, load that certificate onto the YubiKey, and then you'll use it from that from then on. Uh, I've kind of rewritten some of the steps uh, and uploaded it to my GitHub, mostly because it's uh, it's more tailored towards my setup. So I'm using uh, typically Debian-based distros on my desktop, and so. Uh, I'll add in the repositories, add in the uh, OpenSC uh, PKCS module, uh, as well as the YubiKey PIV tool. And so once I've got those loaded onto my system, um, I can start generating certificates. Now before I want to generate some certificates, uh, I'll typically want to establish the PIN numbers uh, on the YubiKey. So uh, whenever I SSH into a device, instead of using username and password, I end up entering a PIN number that unlocks my YubiKey and then my YubiKey authenticates uh, with the remote. So there's a document out there, the YubiKey PIV tool command line guide uh, that I downloaded off of their 
uh, website and it talks about resetting uh, the YubiKey. So this is going to drop all the current pins. It's going to drop your your uh, passwords. You know, you name it. It's going to default the system. But doing this at the beginning will, will help you out. So it sets the default pin to one, two, three, four, five, six. But it also uh, you know generates a puck of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now the pin is what you'll use on a day-to-day -day basis for unlocking the YubiKey and authenticating. Uh, but the puck is what you'll use if you ever locked out your pin because you entered it wrong too many times. Once you've defaulted it, um, it's as easy. Uh, it's pretty easy then to change your pin. So you can change your pin using the below steps. You can change your puck using the below steps, and it's it's pretty easy. Again, you're just setting a pin for daily use. You're setting a puck in the case that you locked your pin out. Once you're Done doing that, I would go back and then start generating um, your certificates. So you use the YubiKey or YubiCo Piv tool uh, to generate a public certificate. You'll then take that public certificate and you'll self-sign it, right? So you can add additional information in for the subject here of this the certificate, but the long story uh, made short is just that you're going to take that public certificate, you're going to sign it. And what to output then is your private certificate. You'll take that private certificate and that gets loaded in to the YubiKey, right? So now that private certificate that's been signed is now on your YubiKey for use. So the last step then is to generate a public key based off of the new signed private key um, that you can then distribute to each of your different remote servers. So I used SSH key gen. I referenced the uh, PKCS package and then output it uh, as my yubikey.pub. All right. And then I can copy that SSH copy ID. We'll reference that uh, public certificate we built and we'll load that on each of our remotes. Now, one thing the previous article mentions towards the end here is using uh, SSH TAC I. You know, so you're referencing the PKCS module whenever you remote into. And it also talks about adding it to your uh, SSH agent. I took a different approach and just modified the Etsy SSH SSH config. If you add this one line in there, then when you try to SSH into a remote host, the first thing it's going to do is reference this module. And if your YubiKey is inserted in your USB uh, slot, then that module is happy you know, to just use the YubiKey and authenticate uh, that way. If your YubiKey isn't present, then it defaults back to you know, whatever you had, username and password. Right? So if I've done all of those different things, then it's pretty easy to just SSH right in. So... So what I'll ask for now is my pin and it'll allow me access. All right, so it's as easy as that. And that's that's the typical uh, method then you'll SSH in. Now if I were to take my YubiKey out and do the same thing, it would prompt me then for a password. Now every now and then, and I'm only talking like once or twice, I've run into that for whatever reason the remote host is not allowing me to to authenticate with a key rather than username and password and the times that I've run into this it usually has something to do with permissions or uh, SE Linux so the, I found the blow commands uh, online to to ensure that the permissions are correct on the folders as well as uh, restarting uh, and defaulting uh, some of the setup for uh, SE Linux after you restart SSHD you're usually up and running. And I can't remember the system I ran into that was doing this. It could have been a CentOS system, could have been a, um, a free BSD. I, I really can't remember, but I did have to go through this step uh, at least once. Uh, but for the majority of my systems, just doing the SSH copy ID copies my certificate or that public certificate onto the remote system, and I'm, I'm good to use it from then on. 
So that covers SSH, but that doesn't necessarily help me out with uh, you know the bulk of my online accounts and what have it. So for that, I've been using uh, some of the other functionality functionality built into the YubiKey. So if I come to the top of the document here, it references a couple of different um, a couple of different other packages that that you might want to download. Uh, so there's the personalization tool and Neo Manager. So for me, it shows up under accessories. So if I go under Neo Manager. It just allows me to uh, look at, at what functions are, are turned on on my YubiKey, what modes it's in. I could change the name. It's very rare, if ever, that I've had to really use this tool. Maybe one time to, to get up and running. But basically, the, the bulk of what you'll do then is in the personalization tool. And so in the personalization tool, you can set up your one-time passwords or your static passwords. So I've used the PIV section of the YubiKey to hold my SSH keys. But then there's this slot 1 and 2 that I can use uh, for other functions. So for, let's say, slot 1, I may do the one-time password. And you can either do it quick or advanced. There are lots of manuals online that will tell you, you know, what the different settings are. But I haven't dug, dug too deep into it. I do know that, you know, so I can select Configuration 1. I can generate a, a public identity which basically authenticate or identifies my YubiKey. And then my YubiKey on the back end will generate uh, a, uh, a uh, one-time password to be authenticated with whatever distant end that is. So you'll generate it, you'll write it to the YubiKey, and then you can upload it to YubiCo. If you do that, you can go then go to the YubiCo website. Uh, there's a couple of links on there for testing your YubiKey so that you can you know, make sure it's, it's, it's working. Um, but I do know that when you upload it, it talks a little bit about these VV style uh, public identities are more for testing basis. Um, and so they may last on the YubiK or YubiCo uh, server or they may be dropped. So I, I wouldn't head down that route if you're going to use this for a long-term basis. Instead, you can go the advanced route. Um, and in here, you can, again, generate your own public uh, identities, private, and all that kind of stuff. And notice here that I start with a different ID, uh, which is, again, going to identify your YubiKey. And because it's not a VV key, you don't have to worry about it getting dropped. Now what you'll notice here is that you're basically just writing the configuration there's no upload here to Yubico so uh, again I haven't gone too deep into here but my assumption then is is that you'll take your ID and you'll upload it to whatever service that, that you want to uh, authenticate with so if I'm you know trying to set up my Google account to be there they would need to know what ID it is and, and a couple other things and that would get it up and running so that once you um, you know, hit your button on the YubiKey, uh, it sends that ID forward, and then they'll authenticate it uh, to the YubiCo service. And, and I could be a little bit wrong there. I just haven't dove too deep into it. What I do know is that uh, once you get this up and running, your slot one configuration is a, a quick kind of touch of the YubiKey. So on the YubiKey, it has the button in the center this Y button in the center um, and so uh, it is uh, like a little metal plate that you touch and so a quick touch of that activates configuration one a long touch then activates configuration two so if I bring up like a uh, we'll bring up Kate so if I do a quick touch it generates a password if I do a quick touch generates a password and so I can do this over and over again it'll just keep generating passwords but notice here at the beginning these couple of characters are, are always the same that those first couple characters and that uniquely identifies my YubiKey notice I'm just using the the test one and then everything following that is that one-time password right now if I hold it in what it's going to do is generate uh, or it's going to activate configuration two. In configuration two, for me, I have a static password. So if I go back, 
I'll go to static password scan code I could set configuration to choose my keyboard layout and then I could type in whatever password I want it to generate um, moving forward now obviously I'm not gonna generate that for you because I actually use that password but long story short is you need to put a a decent password in here a, a nice secure password it does say max of 38 characters so you can either come up with your own password or what I've found works pretty well is to just take date which is going to generate something like that I'll pass that to something like Shaw 256 sum which generates this long thing and then I'll pass that to head character and maybe I want a 32 character password it really depends where I'm going to use this password so for me something like that would work and so I would take this copy it bring up the UB key man I can't read that let's just do a control V and now I've I've put my password in there I can write the configuration to my UB key and now whenever I hold do a long hold of the UB key button uh, it will automatically output that and so what I've done is I've set up my static password in slot 2 uh, and that's what I use for my key pass so key pass is a, a local database um, that I control and so I think for me to install KeyPass, uh, I'm running Ubuntu Mate, so I think it was in the, the boutique. It's KeyPass. Yeah, so it's in here. I'm sure it's probably just an apt getaway. You may have to add a PPA. I, I don't know, but I just did it from uh, the Ubuntu Mate uh, boutique. And so when you bring it up, I was able to create a database file. So this KDBX file is a, is a local database then that houses all of my passwords. And so as long as I come into this password thing, I'm going to hold the button down into my YubiKey. And so it generates my long password and allows me um, into the database. And so I might create some, some website. So if we go to edit this, this is just a test, right? So I would create a title for it. I would create a username. Typically what I do is I just go to generate. I have it generate a, a new password for me. I'll copy this out, paste that into whatever service I'm trying to create a new account with. As long as it accepts it, I'll accept it here. Type in the URL to it and hit OK. So now whenever it's time to authenticate, you know, I want to log into that site. I can copy my username to my clipboard. Come here. Paste. And now my username is there, right? If I go back, now I can copy the password that it generated to my clipboard. And I would paste that into whatever service, you know, I'm trying to authenticate to. So it's pretty, pretty handy um, to, to store all of your different accounts. You can create all sorts of different folders. Um, and then once you're done, you go ahead and save the database and you can then log out. You need to log out or you need to save and log out to ensure that, you know, your one, you, the, the new accounts you put are saved, but then it closes the database so that you can open it again, say on another system. Now, one of the things I found is Obviously, that works great if I'm sitting here on my desktop computer, but that doesn't necessarily help me out if I then sit down at, say, my laptop. So to manage that, I uh, installed OwnCloud, uh, and I think I also did it through the boutique. So there is an OwnCloud client, and so you can install it there as well. I'm sure it's just an apt get uh, away as well but uh, again it was in the boutique but either way once you have it up and running I have an own cloud server on my network and what I have it doing is syncing 
um, the folder that houses my KeePass database. And so any then computer that I have set up to also sync to it gets the most up-to-date copy of that database. And so I've been able to jump between my desktop, jump between my laptop, and whatever other devices I have it installed on. Now there are times where you know I might be out of the house and I don't allow uh, access to my own cloud outside of my house, but I have VPN mechanisms to get into my network. So as soon as I VPN in, own cloud sees you know, the client sees the server, it updates, I get the latest copy of my database, um, or maybe I'm pushing the latest copy of my database to own cloud to be replicated on my other devices. So that's pretty much the mechanisms I've been going through for my, uh, you know, my key management, uh, you know, my account management is the YubiKey, uh, KeyPass uh, for all the different accounts, and then own cloud to replicate that KeyPass database across my devices. So if you see some kind of fatal flaw in my methodologies, please let me know. Um, I, I'd really like to, to, to do a better job of, of managing all of these different things and, and ensure that, hey, you know, in my passing, you know, all my wife has to do is, you know, go to the safe and she has the PIN number then for my YubiKey, which is in the safe, puts in my YubiKey, hits the button and now she has access to every one of my accounts and so you know it at least gives me a little bit of of uh, you know rest assuredness that you know in the case that something happens that uh, you know she's going to be all right at least in that capacity so again if you see some kind of fatal flaw or you want to you know add in some comment uh, please email it to me um, I think I you know my email address is pretty much out there um, on most of my videos. So again, just, just shoot me a message. Um, if you learn something along the way, hey, send a comment as well. I uh, appreciate the feedback. So thanks for watching.